Hey, how you gang? Uh, this is uh, T minus a few days to Fourth of July, and uh, <clears throat> I've been up with Deep Green, and um, it's been raining, raining, raining. And boy, is it ever so deep green, man! Woo! Yeah. And welcome to Dreamy Dreamland with Sensei Al Bob. I am your Sensei Riot, your storyteller, and. Uh, I've been, you know, without um, any input from the outside world for the last week. No, nothing. So that's okay. I've just been watching the flowers go. Sandra, man, hello, doll face. And um, so I've been reading and writing, you know, and uh, I'm working on my, I'm working on three novels, right? Don't believe a word I say, same as it ever was. Legacy, and uh, I forget the other one. But I've been writing on legacy. I haven't been bouncing between the three. But they're interconnected. The storylines are across the board, you know, like uh, Harry Potter or uh, you know, uh, Star Wars, right? And so um, I just keep clicking away but you know i'm watching i listen to the radio that's what i do think and npr and um where i am actually we have a pretty good uh public radio station right it's etsu right um, there in johnson city and you know i'm 50 miles away we got a lot of mountains so sometimes the reception's good sometimes it's bad um, and I, morning edition and uh, the other thing in the afternoon is like, and everything in between is pretty useless. But at night, from 7 p.m., you know, all the way through, it's great, right? And, um, and I have a show called, um, uh, Appalachian, something, it's about Appalachian, because we're in Appalachia, right? So ETSU has a whole Appalachian department. They do, and ETSU is a great school. They have some great departments. It's been around a long time, so it's, it's got some, um, you know, weight. But it's a school like App State, and Boone is just a party group. And that poor town Boone is going to die because those kids aren't coming back. You know? And uh, uh, and it had about 200 restaurant bars. But they all died. They all closed. I mean, not to come back, you know? So, um, there's some, this scene, you know, if you go look at Richie Bombasi from Boston, Richie from Boston, um, he, um, you know, he's like Chicken Little, you know, and end of times, right? Oops, you know, you better buy uh, your, your prepper supplies for me. And uh, so, uh, but I love him. He's really out on the road. He's talking to everybody. And, you know, he's, you know, it's an interesting guy. And um, my uh, friend who, uh, you know, comments all the time from Ireland, um, you know, he watched a lot of good ch uh, channels. And he, if you go to the comments on the last show, right? so Sandra, so I can read, uh, you know, what do you think of what's going on? You know, what's your take? Where are you and what do you experience? You know, where I am, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And no one, you know, I mean, I go as far as wearing my mask as a fashion statement. And, uh, what, what are you seeing, Sandra? Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I, I dug down into uh, the piles of book out in the forest and these two survived very nicely. Um, experience of insight and universal mysteries. And this is published by the guys who Elizabeth um, Claire Prophet, right? And her husband. And, you know, they were big, you know, between the 50s and the 80s. And then, you know, first he died, then she died. And um, they came from uh, what was the name of their organization. Um,
magic presence. You know, and, and that's kind of what it's about in, in our lives. We live in a magic world, and we are unconscious to it because we are so distracted by, oh, I got to you know, pay my bills. I live in a real world, you know, I got to, you know, kind of black job, blah, 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 and, you know, I go out, you know, drink every night, have meaningless sex, you know. I'm set to reality. Uh, let's see. Go back to the beginning here. The Noble Eightfold Path. Right? We've all begun a journey, a journey into our minds, but because we have some, our mind is just a Rolodex, you know, a metal cage of, uh, you know, uh, staying inside. I'm in Miami. I think it's not a bad the numbers would indicate. Well, people die all the time. As bad as how it's being, this whole thing is being used. I'm sure there's a, uh, it's like, you know, there's flus. I mean, it's all kinds, like where I live, I live up in the clouds. I'm about 4,800 feet, 4,200 feet, somewhere. And the, cloud, the, the weather comes right through my front yard. You know, it's not above me, it's through. Right? Last night we had a thunderstorm. Luckily, you know, the thunderstorm was, you know, maybe its center was probably 12 miles to the south of us. Because, you know, I see the flash and I count and it'd be, you know, 12, 20 counts. And so it was a ways, but man, it was, the whole place shook, you know, by this in the middle of it. Wow. And it rained like hard, hard, hard. I mean, to the point where it woke me up, you know, middle of the night. Um, and um, and so this pandemic and um, Black Lives Matter. I mean, you know, I went to. Uh, so you know, I'm you know, I have issues with you know, old. I got all these things, and you know, it's interesting. As you get old, I took care of my parents for the last 28 years of my life. Whereas my brothers and sisters who all had very good jobs, had money, blah, blah, live closer to them, um, didn't, you know, have anything to do with them, right? Because I had nothing to do with the family. You know, I would see them on Christmas and stuff like that. But my grandma, yeah, I'd see them. You know, Aunt Gracie, yes. But my parents, my brothers, sisters, not because they were so about the family business, but I had nothing to do with it. Just did not. You know, my, my brother, you know, my dad, my sisters, you know, they called me in one day, you know, you want to join the business, you know, and you're the old man on the totem pole. You had to do exactly what they say, you had to look this way, you had to cut your hair, you had to blah, blah, stop being an artist, blah, 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 blah. And I said, hey, good luck with that. And then didn't see him for another 15 years. I was living in Ireland and all over the world. And, you know, that was a much more interesting life. Now, my bros and my sisters, you know, they, um, they worked in business and they made a nice salary and they had big houses and fancy cars and boats and this and that, but they stayed in the same place, you know, and they were, you know, treated like a child by my parents, you know. So, anyway, I had nothing to do with it. But in 1980, when I came back from Ireland, um, you know, my um, parents, you know, they were in, in the middle of Third World War and, you know, and I had been a negotiator. So, I negotiated, you know, a peaceful settlement between my you know, brothers and sisters and my parents and, and splitting up in the business. And my brother took it. And my father made him pay. My bro, bro had spent 40 years of his life in that business and built at least 60% of whatever it was. My dad got a... You know. So um, that was the, the, the issue, you know. And so I said, okay, I'll take care of you. But... My parents were okay. I mean, they weren't like Stalin or Hitler or anything like that. Um, you know, they were like anybody else's parents. And um, I realized that, uh, you know, they traumatized us because they were traumatized. My dad had PTSD from being in the military. My mom had PTSD from running hospitals and, and her great aunt and lots of other stuff. And if you listen to my, uh, I have over almost 1,200 shows. Now, you know what I would love, you know, Sandra, it would be great if you have the capabilities to go, 
family thinks of strange because I prefer solitude to socialize and travel. Right. You should put in trivial socializing and travel because socializing and travel are very good as part of what being a human being is about. Um, but it's a trivial part, you know, when we don't talk about it. And as I was saying, so when I was in Virginia, I had really good health care. I had wired myself in really strong, right? And then um, um, that. that's insane. And so, so I went to the Band Aid station that they, it's not even a hospital. You know, if anything's really wrong, they take you to either Johnson City or boom, or helicopter you to you know, some other place. So uh, I went in there and they were taking my blood pressure, and the girl had put the hose between the cup and my arm. She, push the button, brrr, and, you know, it showed that I, you know, blood pressure of 640 over 1,000. It was like, what? And and she, and they were all, like, running around like chickens cut off their head. I said, hey, hey, yeah, forget this machine. Go get, you know, the thing you pump up on. Well, we, we don't know anybody. I said, I'll do it, you know. So put the, that thing on my thing. I put the things on. And, and my blood pressure was, like, um, 127 over, you know, 60, you know, very good. And I knew it was good because, you know, I'm, I'm being a good boy. And um, and I said, guys, you have to, like, you know, and so it was like I was teaching a class, a doctor, two nurse uh, practitioners, and four nurses were in there, right? I said, oh, he's going to die. <clears throat> and, um, you know, they were getting ready to get a helicopter. For me. And I said, no, look. Do it on let pee. With a hoses, sorry, you know, and so, um, <laughs> so <clears throat> they stayed there, and I read all their palms, and I talked to them about the insight of patience and breathing and this and that, and I went down the line and read them all, and they all were crying because I talked about who they really were, not the trivial motif or what clothes they were wearing or what car they had. And so they were like, oh, we love you. You know, come back anytime. <clears throat> Good luck with that. Because they're uh, in medicine in America, hopelessly incompetent. I don't think and um, Donald Trump um, basically um, is, is, you know, he is a poster child of politics in America. Um, unbelievably incompetent, you know, because we live in a corporate state. You know? Corporations buy the politicians, put the, the morons in. We're going to have a guy, um, you know, I'm sure that Donnie will win again, you know, but it all depends on the corporation whether they want, you know, Joey or uh, or Donnie, you know, and um, and we are, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt if the aliens invade, uh, you know, before the summer is over. I mean, even, you know, it's like Independence Day, the movie, it's like perfect, you know. For us to have it right now, you know. So, um, yep, quality, not quantity, exact amount, right? So, um, what I'd love, you guys, because I'm watching other people's channels disappear off of um, Twitter, and the big corporations are going, oh, you know, uh, we're going to defund Facebook and uh, Twitter and all those uh, platforms, and they'll just collapse, you know, and then we won't have anything. So there's a guy who does a radio show that I listen to late at night called Clyde Lewis, Ground Zero. And, you know, he's, he's a puddlehead like me, but he strikes an interesting note every now and then. And he's got great bumper things. Well, I used to do the same. I used to do, I used to call it sound art. And he has some really great bumper, um, you know, they last about two minutes. Sweetie, can I have a little more coffee? Bring over the, the thing and uh, uh, again, it's incompetence. 
poor girl. You can't even hold me close. How many miles do you walk a day, miss? I don't know how many here, but when I get home, I walk four miles. Holy. And the little dog, I get out for all the evenings after well, that, I leave here. Well, that's good for you, kid. Oh, yeah. I got a place up the road where I walk two miles, and then when I walk up to the house, it's two miles. Because it clears your head, yeah. helps your heart. I just enjoy it. Yes. My little dog does, too, so I get her out take her What ride. kind of puppy? I got a registered beagle. Ah. She stays in the house with us. Yeah. Miss Molly. Miss Molly. Not Molly. Daisy. Miss Daisy. Miss Molly's yes. one died. Miss Daisy's where I got now. Uh, how old is Daisy? Uh, three year old. Uh, she's got many more years. Yeah. Her. She's my couch taker, I call her. Uh huh. She's my little cat. She lays there and waits on me until I get home. Well, that's good. That's what dogs are supposed to do. Uh, so. Somewhere I had her kicks, she just started going and waiting. And the doctor told me, the cat told me to walk her, but it ain't helping. They think it's just where they fixed her, so. Right. Yep. Yeah, as much as you can get fixed. And, you know, that's, you know, I won't even go into any of that. But I will read some of this. It's kind of good. Uh, taking the first step is difficult. And it always is. Starting out is the hardest thing. Once you get going, not a problem. And I learned that young, you know, like around six or even younger. Oh, he's not too fat. He's cute. He's my baby. So you didn't want puppies, eh? Well, it just, she had, she had some trouble, you know, trouble. Uh -huh. And to keep her from suffering. Right, right. We went ahead with Right, had her fixed. Had her fixed because she was a Lincoln. Uh-huh. I had a... Uh, a lab, um, Newfoundland border collie, really great dog, right? Mm -hmm. And I always thought she was a lesbian because she showed no interest in guys, right? Mm -hmm. And then one day she started getting fat and fat and fat. And I took her to the vet and the vet said, well, she's going to have puppies, moron. So she had uh, eight puppies and uh, I kept them until they were big enough to go. And then that's my outside dog. I've got a red heaver. Oh, yeah. But I keep, I keep that on the farm to ride the tractors with Yeah, us. yeah, yeah. He's a good dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he. I can see he's a good dog. Oh, yeah, you just... He minds, he minds. He's my outside dog. I call him Angus. Outside dog? Yeah. Okay. Well, the other one acts like a cat. Uh, the other one acts like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's some, you know, this is my community. So uh, I've known them for years. They show me the pictures of their kids, their animals, etc. And I try to. You know, I don't preach to anybody. So those nurses and doctors I saw, you know, I didn't, I basically read their palms just like, I lined them up and bang, 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 bang. And they all went. Right? And they all been working together. So they all knew, you know, this, this one knew what I was saying about that one was like right on and, you know, it's right down the line. And then I talked to him, you know, and this one goes, what about this black lives matter? I said, well, baby, if you don't know that you're a black person, if you don't know, you know, that, this whole issue is about class and money and that blacks have always been on the third one. You know, they can't get any of that. And if they do, they stop being black. You know? So, um, and we're all basic. Why I live out in the middle of nowhere is because they'd really have to spend some money to try and wire me, you know, 
but uh, nothing, you know, I have nothing out there electronic, you know. Not to say that, you know, if they wanted to, they couldn't, you know, beam something from space, you know, I'm sure they could. Um, so um, the real deal, um, what I would love is, I have a sense that the internet's going to go away. Either financially, that's a business plan of, you know, what they, and they've already used it, you know, they've already, Facebook has already uh, collected. It's a really good um, uh, book about, um, oh, you know, Bannon and um, the other chuckleheads of, uh, uh, you know, Donnie's handlers um, were over there in England and, um, that's where uh, Cambridge Analytic was. And um, they did, I mean, if you wanted to talk about, you know, something illegal, I mean, they broke every law in the book to get the numbers on people so they could play the game. You know, basically, Donnie won by 85,000 votes in, in those four major states. Not each, altogether. You know, he, you know, he, those uh, states of, uh, the electoral college, right? And it was it was scammed, right? And, um, and so it's been foretold that Donnie's going to be the last president, you know. And I think it's very, you know, George Lucas was pretty interesting because he he got the whole Star Wars trilogy straight out of uh, the mouth of Joseph Campbell, and then he, um, you know, strung it into how many movies that was. And um, it's really interesting because all of that stuff really represents us. I mean, little do we know that uh, we've been here a billion years. You know, we are uh, a slave race. We were manufactured, you know, by the Anunnaki. You know, and um, if you read Joseph um, Joseph P. Farrell's book about the Death Star. Uh, which is the pyramids. And um, the pyramids weren't a burial ground for the kings. No, it was um, um, basically a, a grand um, weapon, you know, a planetary killer, right? And uh, there was a gigantic war, and there was a planet, you know, the, the seat of the empire was somewhere, be, you know, over between Jupiter, Mars, and Earth. And um, there was a gigantic war. Ah, boom, you know, and you look at Mars. One side of Mars is obliterated. The other side, it's fine, you know. So that when they blew that planet up, the, right, and the big flood, you know, Noah's flood, pretty much was the, you know what happened from the concussion of blowing up a planet and our orc belt, where all the asteroids and stuff is, it's like the garbage pail. It's like the chaff of. Um, of that planet, and there's a ton of stuff there, minerals and, and, and stuff, and technology, you know, which we've gone out and got, right? And we started going out and getting it around um, the late 30s. And when I say we, I don't mean the United States, I mean the corporate oligarchy. Anyway, so um, everything that happens happens for a reason. And um, now, you know, this. Um, virus infection is definitely a virus infection. Now, if you go to um, uh, straight, clear thinking, clear thinking uh, with, uh, what's his name? Ugh. YouTube channel, Clear Thinking with Cliff Hyde. See, Cliff is gone. Totally gone. All that's on here is advertisements. <laughs> so, I've got almost 1,200 shows up there. And I would love it if you guys started taking them and putting them on your hard drives, on thumb drives, on CD-ROMs. And, and if you could, 
you know, make a compilation and maybe send it to me because I have the only thing I have to show for this is hey, go to my YouTube channel and look at the shows. Right? And I have a sense that the internet is coming down. The internet as we know it. Right? Um, basically, if you're going to want the internet, you're going to have to, uh, you know, basically a take the shot, right? And the internet. You know, that injection will not be antiviral. What it'll be is nanobots injected into your life stream, and uh, it, it will connect you directly to the Internet. So they know what you're thinking, where you are, what your body's doing, etc. If you don't have that, uh, if you're not hooked up to the new Internet, you're not part of the matrix, well, you're not going to get anything. So, when they say don't take the number, it'll be pretty hard not to take it. But you can still take it and, and, and like with these two books, you know, experience of, of uh, insight and universal mysteries, you know, you can, you can kind of, you know. Uh, let's see. I see within you certain inner understandings of the great law, but you are not outwardly aware of it enough to produce that which you desire to rip from the omnipresent, the universal supply. You know, that's what uh, you know, zero point energy is, the universal supply. You have desire to see something of a kind. So honestly, and so determinedly, it could no longer be withheld from you. So you want to do something. You want to see something. You put it in your head. And I constantly, this is one of my mantras, good thoughts bring good words. Good words bring good actions. Good actions uh, bring um, good deeds. Good deeds bring um, good outcomes. Now, most people don't have good thoughts. Their mind is uh, trashed with, oh, hey, this person, oh, look what they did to me. Oh, why can't I have the, oh, you know, really, you know, hateful, spiteful adversary, you know, wanting. You know, so, um, the real question is, you know, you need to, that's why meditation, because, you know, people really who call themselves meditating teachers or police. Um, so the whole thing is you sit in a comfortable space and you breathe, right? And you focus your conscious mind on your breath. Now, then your mind trips off into other things, you know, uh, and um, and that's what happens. And you're supposed to, you know, take a look at where your mind is drifting off to and go, okay, and then go back to focusing your conscious mind on your breath. And, you know, the more you restart like the starting of the, of the endeavor is always the difficulty but if you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it you know when you wake up and when you go to sleep and maybe once during the middle of the day um you'll get better and better at it too like me i can go into state here i'm sorry to stay there. I went away, and I went to, where did I go? I went to uh, um, the old Crone's Farm, you know, because I've been writing legend, and I've been writing the section where, you know, was unheard voice, Satan, and the old Crone um, were now a team you know, working to deal with the issues of the day. And, you know, Satan isn't the ultimate evil. He's just a chump, like most other evil things are. So, um, and the true evil is the evil inside you that you allow to stay there, right? You know, when you become aware of it and when you shine love's co-creative light onto it, it's like, forget it, you can't. It's like the water I, I have uh, for my spring, you know, it's not, you know, 
chlorinated. It's not fluoridated. It's not. It's from the spring. It comes from the spring straight to my hose to you know, my faucet and and, uh, and it, that you know we have so much rain, man. The pressure of the spring blew out one of my hoses today. And I woke up this morning like with a kind of sound, and um, you know went over there and the hose blew out. So let's see if it blows out again. But we've had so much rain that the, the I don't even need my pump anymore. The thing is like killer pressure. They show um, the water I use to drink. Um, you know, I have three liter bottles that I bought of, you know, distilled water. And they're clear plastic. And I fill them with the hose, put the cap on, and put them in the sun. You know, put them be in the sun for two or three days. And then I, you know, use them to cook with and to drink and to make coffee and tea. And that sunlight is so strong. The UV is so strong that it'll kill anything in that clear so now I'm starting off with pretty good water to begin with the spring you know, it's like pretty good but just you know I'm, I'm doing that and uh, the other thing is I'm out in the sunlight now I put on you know, sunblock but it was UV one two and three or B and C whatever they call it and um, C nothing stops it Right. It'll go right through your house. So there's not much you can do about that. But uh, the other two, which burn you, um, you know, is, is what you can protect from. Right? And you wear long sleeves, stay in, in the shade, that kind of stuff. I mean, I get up in the sun, I do my chores in the morning, you know, my gardening and stuff. And then I either sit in the hammock and read, um, or I come here and talk to you guys. Or I write other errands. But really, you know, I don't go out much. You know, maybe once a week, if that. I mean, the last time I was out was the last time I was on YouTube. So you know, that's been at least a week. And like for the fourth, I'm not going nowhere, you know. So, anyway, back to meditation. It is the key for you to see what's going on inside of you. Now, if you go back, and Chandra, have you seen any of my guided meditations? I must have at least 50 of them. Right? And um, they're, they're super duper. I mean, before I do any of these shows, I kind of go into a shamanic state and, um, you know, for myself to, to not so much what I'm going to say, but to put on this screen going into your eyeballs and around you a shamanic field. So um, that's what this is about, you know. Um, so, welcome to Dreamy Dreamland with Sensei Alba. I want to tell you right off the bat, this show is simply for entertainment's sake, right? So um, don't uh, be uh, misled, you know. Uh, don't believe a word I say. Check it out for yourself. And if you practice meditation, and you're, if you go watch it, out of meditations and you start to go into your own accomplishment right? you know these books are good because they're like the things I used to you know, things I used to write uh, for the corporate world uh, was um, tremors about things you know and want to know so what's you know we know this is going to happen what what's your opinion of it right and here's the data you you know take a look at it I would get data that no one else, you know, wasn't in your textbooks, right? When I was at Los Alamos in San Diego, in Kirkland Air Force Base, you know, I was um, asked to do, you know, look at things. And, and my speciality was power supplies, right? That you could tune, you know, harmonically and um, also uh, scalar wise and also dimensionally, right? Now, Electricity does this, you know, alternating current does that anyway. You know, at, at those big generators down at the dams at the end of the armature of those uh, generators, there is a field. Right? It's called a torsion field. And, you you know, they have got it roped off so you don't go in there because it'll... And so they've known that there's this effect, right? I mean, but electrical engineers are taught about it 
part of their world. And when I started you know, studying electrical engineering in school at 16 at Cooper Union, I kept, you know, I didn't last more than, you know, an hour. And then they sent me over to the other department called Alternative Technologies, where they did talk about stuff like that. So, um, anyway, so how about some thumbs up, man, you know? Um, oh, so we have 375. We're, we're, we're moving towards Bethlehem, 400. Um, but, you know, a lot of people tell me they never get notified when the show's coming out. So you kind of have to re hit that bill, subscribe to it. And, uh, so go to my blog, which is uh, where you find my novels, my stories, at uh, xrattet dot blogspot dot com. Right? And you can send me a message on the old uh, Gmail, Jude Awake 42 at Gmail. Let's see what we got on the Gmail here. It's just, you know, YouTube and Google spam stuff, you know. Well, one day I might look at what it's talking about. Purpose of the message is to inform you that we have published now I'm the guy who put Riyadh Publishing up, you know, and they're inviting me to. You know, important, you will need to sign a Google account, accept invitations, start contributing to the cloud. If you don't have a Google account, you can create. So, you know, that's Google trying to go fishing. And everything here is YouTube, 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 Google Maps, YouTube, 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 YouTube. Your Google is Google, YouTube, 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 Google, Google, Google. So there's no individual person. There's no one connecting to people. This, you know, all the stuff from YouTube and Google, in my mind, is just Graham Butler. Graham Butler is is a guy who who leaves comments and talks. He's the only person, right? No one else. That's about it. And that's what I'm saying, is that uh, all of these platforms are going to go away. Everyone's ability to interact with each other over these platforms is going to disappear. I mean, it's going to disappear like the bat. Not a slow thing. Because basically, all these corporations are, are pulling away from all of these platforms. And... Um, it's going to be um, difficult for those entities. I mean, they've done their job. They have totally captured everyone's brain, given all the information to the high table, and uh, <laughs> that's it. So that's why I'm living out in the deep green, because, you know, like this week, you know, it was raining, 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 and all I did was read books and write a little bit. And last week I wrote a lot, but this week not so much. Because once I start reading a book, I kind of go through it and mark it up and think about it, write stuff in the columns. So um, here we're coming up on 40 minutes and 40 seconds. There's three of you here. And Sandra, are you still with us? Sandra. So what's, Sandra, what's Miami like these days? Uh, I used to live in South Beach. I used to have a really nice little house down in the Florida Keys. Down, down in uh, right near uh, Marathon. 
in South America. No, no, North America. It's the next little key. And uh, there was a great, uh, there were three kind of like um, vacation lands, you know, things yeah. that, you know, people would come and stay there for a week. And there's a little golf course, a little tennis courts, you know, a marina, big pool. Um, and it was built in the 50s, 60s, 70s period. I mean, it started out in the 50s and they had cabins. And then you know, they kind of expanded in the six, late 60s. And it was really interesting architecture. You know, very South Beach, concrete. But they, they took coral and, and stuck coral into everything. So it wasn't a concrete wall, it was coral. But the whole thing was made out of concrete. So and it was all kind of up 10 feet. So when the hurricanes and the storm surge would come in, it would just go under the building. It would never get involved. Right? So... And it was a really nice marina, it had a gigantic pool, and it was palm trees, so you could like float in the pool, and the palm tree would be your umbrella. It was really nice, and um, and I I kind of stumbled onto this place because I, I used to go down to this place called Bahia Honda uh, State Park and uh, camp out on the beach, and it was great. I mean, it had these great campsites, had water and electricity, and it had a really nice bathroom with washers and dryers. And um, out on the road, there were a couple of little restaurants that you could actually walk to. So, um, so um, one day, my dog and I are there, and, um, you know, I'm on my hammock. I'm seeing, and the weather in the Keys just kind of shoots through, right? It rains, it's sunny, it rains, it's sunny, it rains. And um, basically, this she kind of, like, nudges me and goes, hey, look at that. And it's a storm. It's kind of heading right towards us. And um, I said, eh, no big deal. And then, um, like, almost like that, bang, a lightning bolt nearly whacks us. And then, you know, hail and, and rain, like you couldn't even see through. And so we stumbled over to the tent and got in. And I had gallon jugs of water, you know, holding the tent down. Because, you know, it's hard to stake a tent in sand. Anyway. I had all my stuff in it. I had my blow-up bag. I'm in there, and the wind picks, the, literally picks the tent up and starts. It was like Dorothy in the house. You know, starts rolling it around. And we roll, we <coughs> hit the ground, and we're rolling across the road. And um, luckily, this gigantic big storm set. And we would have, you know, bounced over by US-1 and then bounced into the intercoastal and drowned. And we smashed into the, uh, the, the tent and, uh, you know, the main, that wind and lightning and hail kind of blew over us in about five minutes. But it was still raining like ridiculous. So I got out and uh, got over to my car. We got in the car. We got on the road. And we drove about two miles down to where there was this motel. Never been in it. I used to go. They had a really nice Cubana restaurant. And they had a nice tiki bar. So um, I, uh, you know, went in there and it was like off season, you know, and um, uh, I'm allergic to salt water. <laughs> and, uh, poor baby. You know, you can get over that. I was allergic to everything in the universe. And I, you know, from birth was 10, I would die every year around my birth. And I, and I was just a sick kid, and so um, they didn't expect my the two before me died the same way. They were just sick kids, and, because my mom, you know, she shouldn't have been a mom, but she's Catholic, so she had a lot of kids. And um, my dad, you know, quit the Air Force you know, as a colonel and went into business, and made money. And my mom, it's, it's very interesting because I took care of my parents the last 28 years of their life. And they had achieved everything they wanted to, you know, status, class, you know, money, properties, blah, 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 right? And yet they were kind of miserable. The last 28 years, I mean, the only fun they had was with me. And I only did that when they were fun. And they were only fun about 40% of the time. And so 20% of that 60% uh, I would, um, eh, 
you know, if it wasn't that bad, I'd stick around. But if they were jerks, I'd be gone. You know, that's why I bought that little place. Down. And, and my business took me away, right? So I could, you know, hey, you know, I like to swim in the pool. Yep. I love pools. I love to float in pools, you know. Because floating's easy. You just relax. And because your body is like a bottle of water, it'll just float. Um, yeah, the beach can, you know, sand in your crack, the whole thing. Uh, hey, I'm in Ventura. Okay, gotcha. I used to hang in uh, Fort Lauderdale and in um, Hollywood, right? So um, anyway, um, I went to that motel place and they put me up in one a suite it was great. It was like way high on the air and, and it had its real kitchen, not just a little, you know. I stayed there a week and it was uh, 39 bucks a day. Right? I said, what is it, um, you know, I'll stay a week. And they said, oh, that'll be, it was less than $39 a day. Right? So um, it was like 200 bucks instead of like 300 So anyway, um, I stayed there and, and you weren't allowed to have a dog, but there was nobody there. And the lady really liked the dogs. So I was really, Bella was great. She's down low dog, meaning she can be invisible if she needs to be, right? So no one complained, um, you know, and, uh, I was very down low about it. And she made no mess and, you know, she took care of her business, well, the property. And we went to, uh, there were a couple of these, um, you know, keys, they're little keys that don't even have names, but they're still there and they, they got, you know, a beach and they got, and there's a number of them that have mangroves, right? And they actually do have a little parking spot to park there. And um, you can walk along the water, you know, you go in at low tide, you walk along and then you walk in and you put your my hammock up and I would, I would do that. I had a, um, you know, fold up camping table. So when the tide would come in, the water would like fill up the mangroves, but I, you know, be above it and Bella loved it. She just she loved being with me. you know, she loved jumping around. And I had I had a, I had a cross a stick and a ball and I would just from the hammock throw the ball out into the ocean and she'd run up there and go swim and get it, bring it back. She would do that all day long. And so and I would be a place where even when the tide came in, she could, you know, lie in the sand. It might be wet sand, but it wasn't like she a snorkel. So um, that was my day, right? And some days I'd go into Marathon, and then other days I'd go the other way, Island Murata, where they have a lot of touristy stuff. Right? And there was this one coffee shop that I enamored myself to the owners, and I would go and read palms and you know, cards and, you know, make a few dollars. Right? Hi, dear. So anyway, that week, um, you know, I spent, and the lady said, listen, we have a little trouble and we, we need to raise some money and we'd like to, we're, we're starting to sell off um, a third of our things uh, for, uh, you know, um, God, you, you want to buy? You know, and she took me to this um, shack before they built a concrete hotel. They had these things right on the water that you know, were like in the water, right? And, you, and they each of them had their own little um, place you could have a boat, right? So she goes, how would you like to buy this? And you can come here anytime you want off season as much as you want. And during the season, you know, which starts around you know, New Year's to May, um, uh, you can come two weeks. Otherwise, we rent it out. What do you think? I said, well, what do you want for it? He said, nine grand. I said, and I just finished a gig where I made three times that in a week. So I said, sure, not a problem. And we went back, she had all the paperwork, I signed it, I ran, made out a check, the whole thing. Just, she was like, you don't want to, you know, you know, we, we have a way you can just give us 200 bucks and then, you know, give us X month every month. And I said, nah, here's the whole thing. I own it. Bingo. Bang, bang. She goes, and, you know, if we ever sell this whole place, you will get, a, you know, your, you know, 120, you know, 115 hundredths of this place. You'll get something more than the 900, so it's kind of not only 
Now you're staying here. It's kind of an investment. So, um, you know, and I had that for eight years, and um, it was really great because every time I would, you know, be with my parents in their place in Florida, which was around Stewart, and I had a place in Stewart too. And um, I, you know, years back, uh, a friend of mine who were lawyers, a husband wife team, and um, they traveled the world. I met them in Brazil. And they came back to be lawyers, and he was a really good corporate lawyer, and she was a really good poor people lawyer. And so, you know, he made the money, she did the service. And so they bought a house in Stewart, and they turned half of it into a um, French, um, what do they call those things? Um, it was almost a salon, but it was a restaurant, coffee shop, you know, it's called the Blue Door. And the front lawn they turned into, um, you know, outside, you know, they put concrete and flagstone and, and made, you know, a, uh, and it had a stage. So every night people would be playing music, reading poetry, um, and he had instruments up on the wall. So if you knew how to play an instrument, didn't have one. And people would do that. They would just go and pick an instrument and go and play it. It was, it was really a great place. And it was right, um, he did that in 06. And 08 and 09 and 010. And my parents got really sick around um, 07, right? And, you know, everybody is, I had pretty much sold all my everything, right? And reinvested in other things that would survive whatever economic crash was, was almost there. Because, I, you know, I was given all this information. I said to my dad, you know, you should sell it. Oh, no, I'll make more money. Meaning somebody offered him $3 million for his house. And um, he, he said, no, <laughs> I'll get more. And so I said, no, Dad, you won't. And so the crash happened. He lost half of his net worth, like, you know, because most of his money was in the stock market. And, um, and then he died. My parents died within eh, eight months of each other. And he left my sister, my older sister, as the, uh, you know, power of attorney. And, so in, in the end, she was the house in Florida, she hated. And so she basically sold it for $40,000. And so I split that with my other brothers and sisters. You know, we each got about nothing. And, um, and again, in meditation, you know, and in this book about, you know, the uh, you know, universal mystery, you're supposed to let stuff like that go. You know, which, you know, there are a lot of things about my family which were pretty unfair. You know, people would almost call it, you know, abuse. But I, I pretty much let it go. Whereas my brothers and sisters, you know, they haven't let it go. They buried it inside of them. So it's like this, uh, you know, this uh, sourness that is constantly there, right? So. Now, one of the main reasons why I took care of my parents for so long, first of all, I didn't think it was going to last that long. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I said, you have to take care of us. I said, I don't have to do anything. And, and please, please take care of us. Okay. And so, like I said, I negotiated a settlement between my brothers and sisters about the business. And my parents kind of retired. And, um, but I kind of made... You know, I said, listen, I'll take care of you, but only when you're nice, you know, because my parents were fun. You know? My mom was brilliant. She was, you know, lo loads of fun to talk to and stuff. And my dad, he was you know, over horizon kind of guy. So when we were out and about, I could get him to do almost anything, you know. I remember one time um, we uh, uh, were riding those um, shopping cart things, and um, I had run into uh, this is the Walmart. I had this like tower of beach balls, right? Crappy Chinese, super light beach balls, and they were all blown up. And you could take one out. Anyway, uh, he smashed into that without realizing he was smashing into it, and it ripped the whole side of thing. And you know, about fifty of these beach balls, about this big, kind of spilled out all over the floor. And um, so I said, Dad, let's let's play. Uh, you know. You know, so we drove around and we were kicking the balls with our feet as high as we could. And part of the game was to shoot it over 
the uh, walls of stuff into another lane, bounce it off somebody's head. And if you can bounce it off their head, you got a point. So my father and I were doing this. You know, my dad's like, you know, uh, 89 years old, and he's like kicking this, and he's laughing so hard, he's pooping out his butt. And he's so he's kicking his balls and, and he's leaving big puddles of diarrhea everywhere. And the balls are going through the diarrhea and then he's kicking them and the ball is and people like got white shirts on. It's like you know, they look like uh, Dalmatians. And we got arrested. My dad and I got arrested for doing that. And, but it was I wish I had my I wish I had a smartphone because it was hilarious. Because half the people realized, uh oh, and watch just watched it and were laughing hysterically and they were pissing themselves. And uh, but the management wasn't too happy. And uh, especially with my dad leaving these gigantic puddles of uh, diarrhea everywhere. And he would do that. You know, I said, hey, you know, maybe it's time for depends for you. He said, Oh, I don't need that. And he was really good. He'd wear these shorts. He was really good at like, moving his butt over, and he would shoot, um, um, you know, the diarrhea, you know, without it really getting on him. I mean, it got on him, but not like it could have. And uh, he would go on to the next endeavor. So my dad was could be amazingly hilarious and fun, and also kind of, you know, both my parents somewhat lived vicariously through the stuff I did. You know, I was an artist. I got them to be artists. You know, I did this. I, my mom, you know, I got in the Stop Shorm campaign. I went to those guys and I pretty much, I still had my, my Los Alamos ID. And I said, listen, I used to work here and I'm one of you guys. I believe in nuclear power. And I'm now filming. I want to make a film about this power plant. And then we can show the world what a great thing this is. And they said, oh, that's a great idea. I made, you know, talked to the information guy. We looked at a whole story plan of what we we're going to do. Then I showed up with my wife and uh, my mom. And instead of me being the voice off the camera, my mom was the, the face of this movie. And she just asked questions like your mom would ask, you know, so what's this? How do you do that? What's, what's going on with this? And my mom, smart girl, she acted like Donna Reed and she was dressed like a queen, and my uh, wife was clicking away with her little Leica uh, pictures of everything. And I had kind of given her a 411 of what to go take pictures of so we could use it as evidence, like the, the control room in, in, you know, the containment facility, all of that stuff. And, um, you know, my mom kept finding, why do you have to do anything? You don't have to do anything. You know, I've never done anything I haven't wanted to do. I've always worked for people who needed me more than I needed them. And if I didn't like doing I mean, I was an electrician for 50 years. And I did it because I enjoyed getting up and going to that work. Because it wasn't just drilling holes and pulling wires. You know, I did things like you know, theaters and uh, fancy restaurants and discotheques. And fixed, I had a whole side of my business where I fixed ancient machines that were still being used in New York. New York was a manufacturing town, you know, not so much today. So, um, and why do I do anything? It's because it entertains me and I'm in service to love's co-creation. You know, like here, you know, I come in here, A, because he has pretty good Wi-Fi. So I go into those parking lots. Your connection is unstable. Please wait while we try to reconnect. Well, it's been about... Uh, an hour. So, again, hi and welcome to Good Morning, Good Evening, wherever you are. This is Dreamy Dreamland with Sensei Al Bob. I am your Sensei Al Bob, your Griot, telling you what's up, telling you stories. And all these stories, they may seem um, disjuncted or not connected, but they all are connected, right? And if you go to my um, xrattted.blogspot.com, and, um, you know, um, oh, it's one hour, right? And um, and put that in there. Um, you'll go to that channel, and you'll see all my novels, right? So I do have to do anything. And again, take down all my stuff. You know, but, you know, not get rid of it, but copy. Copy my novels. Copy my video, because... I have a strong feeling that the internet, you know, maybe even this 4th of July, may, 
go away. And that would really, you know, tighten people's, uh, their tidy whites in a bunch. So, um, uh, let's see. I love to see green. Plants, my yes, me too. Meaning, I've spent a good deal of this whole week just watching the grass grow, you know, meditating with the grass. And in May, I, that's when I put in my garden, my, my vegetable garden. I put in about eh, about ten of flower beds, right, all around. And um, it would, um, uh, and basically, I set it all up. It's been raining like. Hey, goodness. What, 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 is, what kind of plant is I G U A N A S? Anyway. So, um, uh, you know. Uh, Yes, I'm right there with you. I love watching plants grow. So everybody's growing, the grass is growing, and my sight, it's kind of a lizard. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I feed on my plants uh, with karmic love, and they are growing like everything's growing. Right? Everything. It's really beautiful. So uh, I'm going to leave you after that. Step away from something. I'll be right back. I'm back. So, um, everything's good. Um, I'll try and do a show at least once a week, if not more. But, um, end of the month, I'm spending my last $10 on this. I don't get my Social Security check for another two weeks. So, that's why I get food back in the ranch. So, I don't know worry about being hungry, but gas and that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's the story. Um, uh, when it's uh, one hour, and it's 55 seconds, I'm going to say, see you later, guys.
So you have a good day, you know, wherever you are. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Stay well. Remember to breathe. Breathe well. Breathe easy. Meditate. Go watch my other shows. You know? Sandra, go watch my shows, right? And everybody, if you can take them and copy them, do so.